but this weekend I'm camped at historic Fort Loudon, Pennsylvania, and we're here for the third annual Fort Loudon Market Fair. Now this is an historic fort from the French and Indian War, it's being beautifully restored by the Fort Loudon Historical Society, and we're going to take a tour around and see what we can see. Well, I always get asked to show my camp, which is no great shakes. Um, but it is like building a three-room house <laughs> you know, out in the woods. So, under the fly here is basically my living room. And my kitchen. And then I've got a French, French wedge. That is my bedroom, and that's it. Now you might notice it's a little bit damp right now. We set up yesterday in a light rain, and uh, it rained pretty much all night. And I think today's gonna be at least cloudy, maybe rainy, but that's okay. So here we are for another market fair. Uh, the day has just begun here, Friday morning. People are cooking, making coffee, relaxing before the day gets going. Things kick off at 9 o'clock, and that's when we're going to be hitting the vendors. Well, this is the camping area. It's known as Helltown, uh, which was the original soldier's name for what's become Mercersburg, where James Smith and the Black Boys were headquartered. And one of the cool things out here is blanket trading. So let's go take a look at some. Two. So blanket trading is where you can get some of the best deals you're going to find here at the market fair. Where campers can put out a couple of blankets with their wares on them outside their camp. Like these great powder horns right here. Well, moving out of Helltown towards the north. We go up a little rise, and uh, we're in the area where the artisans are. They're just to the east of the fort. And this year there were 41 artisans, and they were quite varied. I mean, it, it, it went from bakers, shoemakers, blacksmiths, gunsmiths, silversmiths, box makers, basket makers, pottery makers, you name it. We had some of everything, so let's take a little tour around. Oh, there's solid. Right here at Jerry's, Jerry's tent. He's got some What's nice that? horn work, but he's got something you don't see every day: bear oil, which is outstanding. Great lube. Now, Jerry had some very nice horns that he made, but uh, one in particular really caught my eye. And I'm going to ask Jerry if he'll tell us a little bit more about it. Tell me about that flat one. The flattened horns date back into the 1600s. They were flattened because then they were carried in a pocket or in a bag and not hanging outside. The carving, we see Dutch examples into the 1600s, very ornately relief carved oftentimes the garden of eden is a regular scene that you see and this one has the fish head shape yeah it's style. beautiful just beautiful all right thanks jerry uh-huh this one is kind of hard to see because it's dark but mm -hmm. actually the whole horn is carved in the shape of an eagle from the head the wings back to the tail it's uh pretty intricate it's some beautiful work. At Gosville Shoes, 18th century shoes are handmade by a master cobbler. You can just take it and stick it in the leather a little bit and then take a, a, a small hammer and tack it in. <coughs> Excuse me. So I stitch and then I take it out and then I stitch and then I take it out until it's all the way back around. Just up the road, early American tin is a great place to find anything you need made out of tin. Uh, from ovens to lanterns, cups, basins, you name it. If it's made out of tin, you can find it here. Now, Steinhagen Pottery is uh, there's a bunch of folks that you'll find 
at quite a few of the events on the East Coast. And they make, obviously, pottery. They make things that are both useful and beautiful. And I've got to say that uh, their stuff is gorgeous. I own a couple of their pieces, and I'm really pleased with them. Well, so it's not all guns and tomahawks here. We've got uh, Waits Historic Art, art gallery with historic theme. Let's go inside. Some beautiful examples here. Good morning, ladies. I love this early American frontier art, and um, White's Historic Art has one of the best selections that I've seen. And it seems like as I get older, I'm more interested in, uh, in the art than I was when I was younger. I may just have to pick up one of these for my collection. It's hard to categorize Mark Thomas. He's a rifle maker. He's a horn maker. He's a knife maker. He's a jewelry maker. He's an outstanding engraver. He can turn his hand to almost anything. He's one of the most talented people I've ever met. But whatever he does turn his hand to, it comes out as a complete work of art. You know, at a lot of these events, the vendor's area is what I would call gun-heavy, uh, with rifle makers in, in you know, high proportion. But Fort Loudon's is not like that. It has something for everybody. It's got a wide selection. And in this case, we're looking at St. Paul's Yard, uh, which are printmakers. And they do some beautiful works on, uh, on the printed word. And likewise, you can find hand-woven woolens. You can also find handmade soaps. And you can find a blacksmith who can make a lot of practical items for, for the camp or cabin. Uh, all right here at the market fair. Of course, that doesn't mean that you're shortchanged this year on all of the arms and accoutrements that we love to see. So uh, here is a collection of really beautifully made knives, all handmade, all lovely. It seemed like there were fewer gun makers at the market fair this year than in the past two years, but Mitch Yates... Uh, one of the absolute best rifle makers in the country was there. And Mitch has the added benefit of being a, a wonderful silversmith. So you can go either way, order a rifle, or you can pick up some engraved silver right on the spot. Well, in addition to all the shopping you can do, uh, the Fort Loudoun Historical Society gives you the opportunity to get educated as well. And they have an entire seminar series that goes on all weekend. So this year's speakers were Jason Cherry, uh, myself, Matt Wolf, Brady Kreitzer, and Dr. Walter Powell. I don't have a picture of Dr. Powell, but we were all presenting uh, seminar subjects on just a variety of 18th century subjects from history to reenacting. Well, here at the Market Fair... If you didn't want to go to the bother of building a fire, you never needed to cook a meal the whole time you were here. There were modern food trucks supplying whatever you wanted, but there were a number of period correct choices as well. And one of the most fascinating was the Half Crown Bakehouse. Some of the things that I saw carried out of here just had my mouth watering. I think maybe next year I'll save a little room for something they've got to offer. Well, Fort Loudoun itself, the fort, is really the centerpiece of the market fair. And this has gone from a falling down derelict uh, maybe five, five years ago to being a beautifully recreated French and Indian War era fort. And it just keeps getting better and better. And there are a lot of activities going on at the fort uh, or in the fort this year. So let's, let's take a trip down there and we'll take a look at a few of them. Just outside the fort, there were some interesting demonstrations. There was some cannon firing, uh, which I didn't get this year, I'm afraid, sorry. 
And there was also 17th and 18th century fencing. And that's not something you see every day. And I'm closed off, and I see that she has an opening between her weapons. You can see her make it small, it's like realistic. Okay, you see that, that her dagger isn't right in there. What I can do is I can start extending my sword, and she raises her blade a little bit. Okay, she opens me up. Go ahead. And then she comes right in and, and thrusts at me. Again, I'll show it to you from this side, so you put your blade up. Put it up so I can reach it. I come into an engagement. I come in here, and I step in. See, I, I block her blade with... Now, another display that I found fascinating was put on by Oak Grove Brewing. And in fact, they brewed a batch of ale right at their table outside the Fort Gate. And uh, I found that fascinating. Now, as luck would have it, the folks at Oak Grove were camped right across the street from me out in Helltown. And um, I was hoping to get a sip of that brewed ale, but maybe I got something even better. And I'll let you see what it is. This is Keith Tabor. He's the brewmaster set up here at the fort. We just saw some pictures of him in operation. And he's got a special beer that uh, I'm going to take home and save for a special occasion. But I'd like him to tell us about it. Keith, what have you got there? So this beer is a, uh, a small beer based on a recipe that George Washington wrote in the back of his journal uh, in 1757 when he was a colonel in the Virginia militia stationed at Fort Loudoun, Virginia different Fort Loudoun from here. Um, it's a very simple beer. Uh, it's very quick to make and it was for the soldiers. They used molasses, wheat bran, and hops. Um, we, we, all you end up doing is just making a tea out of the hops and the wheat bran. Uh, once it's done and boiled for about an hour, you put the molasses in, it sits for about a week, and then it's ready to drink once it's bottled up. All right. That sounds interesting. I can't wait to give that a try. Now, Oak Grove did more than just brewing. Uh, the whole family was here camping, and they put on a display of a variety of 18th century crafts. All right, I am here with Corey, and she just built her first flint and steel fire. And isn't it a beauty? I gotta congratulate her because I still have trouble with that. Good work. Thank you. Well, let's head on into the fort itself. Because one of the really cool things about coming here is seeing how the fort changes every year. The uh, Fort Loudoun Historical Society has just been wonderful at rebuilding the fort. And they do this with no public money at all, no state or federal government money. It's all private donations uh, from individuals or, or companies. And uh, as you can see, two years ago, they started building the barracks for the soldiers. And last year, the barracks outside was completed. It was roofed, it was watertight, but it was just an empty shell inside. Now this year, the barracks is completely finished and furnished, and they've started building a storehouse next door, and we'll get to see that go up over the next several years. Well, last year's project was building the barracks, and this year's project is gonna be building the fort storehouse. And as you can see, it's framed up, all timber frame, post and beam architecture. It's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. Saturday night, we had the Fort Social, uh, which has become a fixture of Fort Loudon. So the prizes for the shooting match were handed out. And then we all settled down to sip a little beer, drink a little wine, and listen to some good music. So the music accompaniment was provided by the Forbes Road Frolic. It's a trio, Chuck Crepley, Gary Smith, and Burr Beard. And they play early American and Celtic tunes, and they are excellent. And in fact, one of the first things they did was to provide the music for a country line dancing demonstration. Just cast down, but look now. Meet in the center and lead up, returning to place. Second couple, cast up around your twos, around your ones, lead back, return to place. First man. There were plenty of festivities that evening, and everybody seemed to get into the swing of things, especially the kids. And it was great to see so many young people 
at an event because they really are the future. social is over Saturday night sitting in my camp this is the view <laughs> from my dining fly I don't think that the video can do it justice for the colors for the illuminated clouds all of the subtle hints it's it's like a it's like a beautiful painting, really. It just makes you wonder what it was like to be here in 1756, looking at these same mountains. Vents over tomorrow. We'll be taken down at two o'clock, but I'll have a lot of time to meet people between then before we put this one in the books. But this is Saturday night. I'm sipping a gin and tonic and just totally at peace with nature. Well, goodbye from uh, the Fort Loudon Market Fair 2023. If you are here, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you weren't here, well, I hope I see you here next year. Until then, bye. Bye.